Hey guys, today I'm here with my July and Booktubeathon wrap up. I read nine books in July, which I think is really good. A lot of those I got read during Booktubeathon, which was a fun week. I didn't read as much as I normally read because I was working full-time, but I am happy with what I did read. I read some great books during that week, and also I read some other good books during July. So let's go ahead and get started with the wrap-up. The first book I read in July was The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. I actually started this one in June, and I had to put it down for a little while because I just was having a hard time getting into it, and I was feeling like a reading slump was coming on. So I put it down and picked something else up, but I eventually picked this back up and I'm really, really glad I did because it picked up. I really ended up enjoying this book a lot. It's about a secret society where there's demons and these people who hunt them. The premise reminded me a lot of The Infernal Devices, which is one of my favorite series ever, so I was really excited to read this. It was not nearly as good as The Infernal Devices. Um, but it was a good read, and I will probably pick up the sequel when it comes out next year. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read The Fill-In Boyfriend by Casey West. Casey West just writes these, like, cutesy contemporary books. This is about a girl named Gia whose boyfriend dumps her on prom night right before they're supposed to go in, and she doesn't want to go in without a date and embarrass herself, so she finds this random guy in the parking lot and asks him if he'll go to prom with her. And he does, and they have a good time. But then afterwards, she can't stop thinking about him, and then her old boyfriend kind of comes into the picture, and a lot of drama happens. It was a really cute contemporary book. It was exactly what I needed to kind of get me out of feeling slumpy, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Mosquito Land by David Arnold. This is about a girl named Mim, who moves to Mississippi with her dad and her stepmother, but then she finds out that her mother is back in Cleveland and she's sick, so she decides to hop on a Greyhound bus and go back to her mother. And while she's on this bus trip, she meets all these kind of quirky characters and has an adventure. I have to say I did not like this book as much as I wanted to or hoped to. I don't know what exactly it was about it. I think I just didn't really connect to the characters very well. I just really wasn't a huge fan. It's kind of hard to say exactly why. There were definitely parts of it that I did like, but overall it was just kind of meh. I do know a lot of people who did love this book, um, but I only gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. And the last book I read before Book Tubathon was Young Widow's Club by Alexander Coots. This is about Tamsin, who gets married when she's 17, and then six weeks later her husband dies um, unexpectedly in his sleep, and she's having to come to terms with his death and how her life has changed because she had her whole life all planned out and now he's gone and everything's just totally changed. It was a really good read. It wasn't like the best thing I've ever read, but it was good and it had some good messages about learning to move on and I really enjoyed that about it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Then Booktubeathon happened and I read 4 books for Booktubeathon and I think a total of about 1300 pages, so it was an average of almost 200 pages a day. So I think I did a pretty good job. I completed six of the seven challenges. The only one I didn't complete was obviously read seven books, because I only read four. But I did manage to complete the other six. I'll the first book I picked up for book two with on was Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare. This one was to fit the challenge of reading a book only after sunset, because I was it's pretty short, and I figured I could get through it pretty quickly, but it wouldn't be a book that I would, like, not want to put down. I could only read it at night. And also read a book that's older than you, because obviously this is, like, way older than me. I think it was published in, like, the 1600s, 1500s, so yes, definitely way older than me. And I enjoyed this book. It's not my favorite Shakespeare. I had already seen the play, but I had never actually read, read it, but I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Sister's Insanity by Gail Foreman. This is about a girl named Britt who gets sent to this, like, reform camp because her parents believe that she's a troubled teen and it's kind of this like crazy like work camp and it's not a very good place for her to be and so she meets a bunch of girls and they all try to shut down the camp and it was a really gripping story I couldn't put it down and I, Gail Foreman's one of my favorite authors this was not my favorite book by her but I thought it was really good and I definitely haven't heard anything about it so if you've read it let me know what you thought because I haven't heard anything about it until I read it. I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars. And this completed the challenge of reading a book by one of your favorite authors. The next book I read was definitely my favorite book of the month, and that was The Martian by Andy Weir. 
This is about Mark Watney who gets stuck on Mars and it's about him trying to figure out how to survive on Mars and then also it goes back to the people on Earth trying to get him back and it was just a really really gripping story. I couldn't put it down. There were some points where I was just so stressed out and I just had to know what was going to happen. This is very scientific. It has a lot of scientific stuff and I know a lot of people don't like it because of that but I loved it because of that because I am a chemistry major and I love science and this book was just it was just so good. Um, this fulfilled the challenge of reading a book to movie adaptation but I have not yet watched the movie. I was not able to get a copy of it during Booktubeathon. Um, but I do have a copy of it now, and I will hopefully be watching it probably within the next couple of days. And this also completed the challenge of reading a book that you discovered through BookTube. Yes, I would highly recommend this book. Definitely my favorite book of the month. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. And that's the first 5 star book that I've given since May. And I'm really happy because I was, I've was i been writing a lot of books that I've just kind of been liking but not loving. And I finally got to read a book that I just absolutely loved. And I realized why I love to read. And the last book I read for Booktubeathon was This Is What Happy Looks Like by Jennifer E. Smith. This is about Graham and Ellie, and Graham is this, like, movie star, and Ellie is this girl who lives in the middle of nowhere in Maine. And one day Graham accidentally emails Ellie because he's trying to email the guy who usually takes care of his pet pig, but he accidentally emails Ellie because their email addresses are really similar. And they start kind of talking over emails, and then Graham is actually shooting a movie in Ellie's hometown, and they finally meet in person. And stuff happens, and it was a really cute book. I really, really liked it. Um, Jennifer E. Smith is a bit hit or miss for me. I love the statistical probability of Love at First Sight, but I didn't like the comeback season as much. But I really, really liked this one. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And this completed the challenge of reading a book with yellow on the cover, because there's obviously a lot of yellow everywhere. And the last book I read in July was unfortunately a disappointment, and that was This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. This is about Kate and August, and Kate is a human, and August is a monster, but August doesn't want to be a monster, and Kate wants to be ruthless like her father. And it's set in this world where monsters come out of violent acts, so if you murder somebody, a monster will come up, and so there's these monsters running around this city. And unfortunately, I was really disappointed by this book. I was hoping I would really like it because I loved The Archived and the Unbound by Victoria Schwab. Couldn't connect the plot or the characters super well, I was enjoying it at the beginning, but then it kind of just, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it was. I think I maybe went into it with too high of expectations, and unfortunately I only gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So that's everything that I read in the month of July. What did you read in July? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you again next time. Goodbye!